Police announced several arrests in two different cases. Good evening. This is CTV News. I'm Sonia Shervasva. Well, it's been nearly six months since a Central High School student was gunned down as he walked to school. And today, police announced an arrest in the Markel Ross murder. They also cracked another case. The suspected killer of a 71-year-old woman is also behind bars. Denise Douglas has the details. Markel Ross is the second of six students killed in Prince George's County this school year. Today, here at Palmer Park, police announced an arrest in this case. They say that 20-year-old Trayvon Bennett is in custody. He allegedly gunned down Ross as he was on his way to school at Central High last September. The motive, robbery. Ross's mother says it's been a painful five months since the murder. Here's her reaction we to the arrest. It provides some closure. But it doesn't, just doesn't know that the person is off the street until you get all the truth, all the facts. If I, would, if I had my way, I would ask, why did you, you know, why would you do something like this? As far as how police made the arrest, they say they took several people into custody in an unrelated robbery, which led to the gun used to kill Ross and eventually to the suspect, Trayvon Bennett. Since October 31st, Trayvon Bennett has been incarcerated on a bond for the unrelated citizen robbery. We have been working since then to develop enough probable cause and strengthen our case to move forward in obtaining an arrest warrant charging him with the murder of Markel Ross. We are at that point today with our day-to-day -day work with our state's attorney's office. We are currently at the Department of Corrections where he'll be presented these charges uh, for first-degree murder. In the Police also announced an arrest in another case. 46-year-old James Ward is behind bars for killing 71-year-old Geraldine McIntyre on February 9th. Ward was a handyman who helped McIntyre in exchange for food. Police say that he took advantage of her and stole her TV and killed her. He is now charged with her murder. I'm Denise Douglas, CTV News. All right. Thank you, Denise, for that report. Meanwhile, Prince George's police are investigating a shooting in College Park that may be gang related. The incident happened yesterday around 4 a.m. in the 9100 block of Baltimore Avenue. Officials say 20 year old David Alivar was attending a hotel party when he and others got into a fight with another group in the parking lot. Avalar was shot and taken to a nearby hospital where he later died. Anyone with information on this case is asked to call crime solvers at 1-866-411-TIPS. Well, Congress is facing an $85 million deadline in just four days, and lawmakers are looking for ways to avert sequestration. Today, Maryland Senator Ben Cardin held a roundtable discussion with the small business community in Largo. Prince George's could be hit hard as 16 percent of its workforce is employed by the federal government. I give the comparison. If you're running a family budget and you have money in that budget to, for food for your family, and you also have money in, in that budget to take a vacation, and you run across a hard time, you don't cut each category equally. You might postpone your vacation, but you're going to feed your family. Well, with these across-the-board cuts, the agency can't make those decisions. They've got to treat everything as equal priority. Well, that's crazy. You know, we have things that are fundamental to our national defense. They get cut. We've got things that are fundamental to, to basic research. They get cut. We've got matters that are fundamental to keep our air traffic control uh, safe. They get cut. Now, the cuts would also include $5 million in federal education aid, along with $1.5 million in Title I funding. Now, the Congressional Budget Office also estimates that 750,000 people will lose their jobs nationally. Well, Montgomery County Delegate Al Carr wants every resident to be able to watch a Maryland Public Service Commission hearing. Carr introduced legislation this session to make that happen, but that's no longer needed. The commission has agreed to put live and recorded hearing on its website. If you couldn't make it up to Baltimore to be present for a hearing, uh, you'd be able to watch from your computer, uh, either live or to be able to view the recording after the fact. And I'm pleased to report, uh, because of the many constituents who uh, like the idea, the Public Service Commission agreed with me. And uh, so they've written me a letter to say that they're going to do this even without the need 
for legislation starting on May 1st. Meanwhile, Carr is also sponsoring a bill that would require a utility to notify the Public Service Commission 22 days before it can establish a new rate. Now, the current time is 30 days. Well, if you are a BG&E customer, get ready to see an increase in your monthly bill. The rate hike was approved on Friday. For the average customer, the increase amounts to about $3.33 for electricity and $2.70 for gas. BG&E says it plans to invest in improving infrastructure like pipes, wires and poles over the next five years. The Prince George's Board of Education approves a $1.6 billion operating budget for fiscal year 2014. It's an increase of 1.7 percent or 28, 20, pardon me, 28.9 million from the year before. Some of the key priorities in the budget are allocations to the Transforming Neighborhoods Initiative, which will provide support to schools for truancy and other after school programs. Now, the budget will now go to the county executive, Sharon Baker, who will review it by March 1st.